And a good Monday morning, Birds fans. How are you this fine day? I'm guessing pretty good after last night's performance. Appreciate you streaming in with us here on Birds 365. You got me, Jody Mac, and my partner, John McMullen, who, while not playing Hurt, is playing Spent. Uh, trying to get through a tough one today after a fun game last night. Man, Johnny Mac, that was just... Uh, a, a virtuoso performance on the ground by the Philadelphia Eagles. And I know you don't like Sunday nights. I don't like Sunday nights either because I want to get the Eagles football ASAP, especially on a week where we got through Thursday action and have to wait all the way till Sunday night. It was worth the wait, was it not? No, Sunday night is never worth the wait. <laughs> so that is my quick answer to that. It is an abject disaster every time, but that's that's personal. That has nothing. From the Eagles' perspective, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they were tremendous. Uh, 363 yards on the ground. I don't know if there's a WIP in Green Bay, but if there is, Joe Barry's getting fired today. Um, uh I I don't know I don't know what the Packers were trying to accomplish, but even with that, even with that knowledge, that is an awful coaching staff. But I will say that was impressive, no matter what. Uh, even if that's the best versus the worst, and it, it very well might be from a running perspective, might be the best running team against the worst run defense team. Even though they were twenty fifth, they have no plan whatsoever. Um, it, it, anytime you run for 300, so that's that's like college numbers. That's what that is. I mean, that is absurd. And even when you're like the Eagles, I explain all the time, Jody, when the Eagles don't defend the run well, part of that is baked into their philosophy and that they'd rather give a little bit in the run game uh, to to limit as many explosive plays as possible, yada, yada, yada. Even when you factor that in, those are like college numbers. I mean, uh, and it was the third play. And coming off the Indianapolis game, I'm sitting myself, did this guy even watch the Eagles tape? I, I mean, it, 24 yards, Jalen Hurts, uh, uh, quarterback draw. Then it was, I think, five plays later, 28 yards, 7 nothing. He had a 42-yard run. He was right there. He was one more run away from becoming the all-time leader at quarterback. Uh, Justin Fields set the record earlier this season. Uh, he was, I think he ended up 21 yards behind. It, yeah. And career highs, think about that, Jody. Career high from the quarterback, Jalen Hurts, and Miles Sanders right. in the same game. And, oh, by the way, Austin Scott, when he did touch it, eight yards a carry. Kenny Gainwell, when he did touch it, 4.9 yards per carry. Unbelievable. Pretty pitiful defense by the Packers. And, yeah, we noted that last week here on Birds 365. For those who are worried about their less than stellar offensive performance against the Colts last week and second guessing, uh, and this is what I just couldn't wrap my head around, the Eagles offensive game. Oh, it's because Nick Sirianni was trying too hard to beat the Colts. He was too emotionally mm -hmm. wound up. Even if that's the case, you're then putting that on Shane Steichen as well that somehow Shane Steichen, just by hanging around, Nick was pushing the envelope too hard to get this significant win over the Colts. I thought it was so overstated and, and over beat down on. These same guys called that game last night. How'd they turn it around in seven days and become geniuses again? Of course, that was not the case in India, and they were just pushing the right buttons last night. I think the package and aptitude on rushing uh, defense against the rush was part of it, but uh, give them credit for not only calling it, but executing the offensive line was phenomenal last night and a little nod Mac. And again, we don't get to see the coaching tape. You're just watching it on TV. You're seeing it live. So you got a better look than I do down at the stadium. The tight ends chipped in on the block. And we talked all last week about replacing Dallas God and trying too hard to replace Dallas God. And how the hell are they going to replace Dallas God? We worry about it more from the pass receiving end. They also miss him. Uh, they did an Indy from his ability to run block because he's one of the best run blocking tight ends in the game. 
the guys chipped in last night on the rushing attack and did a good job. The guys filling in for Goddard. So uh, I think we got to give them a little add a guy for their job uh, contributing to 300 combined yards by two players. I'm sorry. You just never see that in the national football. Yeah. Uh, like, like I said, college numbers. And you're right. I mean, well, we all know Jack Stoll can block. So that part to me is not that big of a surprise. That's the strength of his game. Um, but they don't, I'm still worried about that. They didn't get any of the tight ends worried offensively, but that's for the nitpicking later in the show, uh, receiving wise. But, the, you know, it, it looked like they came out wanting to throw the ball. I was talking about that on a pregame show. I did, I did. I had a sneaking suspicion they were going to try to want to throw the ball to get back in track. Um, and and because my assessment is just run it against this team before that even started. And the first two passes were, were throws, throws. And I'm like, here we go. Here we go. And then they're going to lean back on the running game when they need it. And it would probably succeed. But now then they changed gears after the third play and, um, but I, I'm still a little bit worried about that part of it. You know, one of the things you bring up Indianapolis Green Bay. Well, Indianapolis is a bad team, and people say, look, the, the offense is a mess. The, the owner doesn't know what he's doing and fired the offensive coordinator, then fired the head coach. But the defense is good. The defense is good in Indianapolis. So, to me, there's a big difference and an obvious difference between Indianapolis and Green Bay. Um and, and that explains, and plus you're playing on the road versus playing at home. So a lot of things factor into it. Um, but they were able to do these, you know, empty set looks and, and quarterback draws against the Colts to success. And that's, as I said, a very good defense. And if you're Green Bay, you would think, oh, they're doing this against uh, a very good defense. Maybe, maybe we got to change some things, tighten things up. But no. Uh, never an adjustment, never anything. And I give the Eagles credit. And I, but I've given Nick Sirianni credit for this time and time again. He says he'll do what he needs to win a, to, to do to win a football game, and he does. He does. I mean, that's my biggest feather in his cap. He does. Uh, um, it might take him a while to get there. Uh, might take him a, a little bit too long. Uh, yesterday it did not, um, and when he got there, he just he just kept it there, and right. he should have. And you mentioned the first two plays did not go well, and then after that it all seemed to click in, so it didn't take him all that long to uh, get it rocking and rolling yesterday. And while the passing game was not prolific, and what did you want, 800 yards of offense? If you're going to run for 300, well, you're only going to pass you're only gonna pass the ball so many times. Jalen Hurts was efficient with that too. Spread yeah, he was efficient. Around. You know, it, a, a little bit early, he was a little bit inaccurate, but he came on, you know, and he was fine overall. And he made some big plays in the passing game when he had the opportunity. Um, it's not – my issue isn't mainly with Jalen Hurts. My issue is with, you know, how do, how do you compensate for the loss of Dallas Goddard? And maybe we'll keep talking about this until I get Dallas Goddard back, and then I'll well, be they, back, and it won't matter. Johnny, they put up a forty spot. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking then, about the passing game. Doesn't the scoreboard for at least one day say, "Okay, they got through it without Dallas Goddard"? Well, yeah, but I don't think you can count on 363 yards rushing against any kind of competency. Yeah, you got, any, you got a point there. Yeah, that's week. probably true. Yeah, I, I mean, 1948. That's the last time the Eagles ran for that much. So I that, I don't think that they're, they're going back to back um, against Tennessee, which, by the way, has a good defense. Um, so that that is more of my point. But yeah, we'll get to the nitpicking portion. But you got my one of my nitpicks. Well, that and yeah. special teams. I mean, oh. special teams are abysmal, abysmal. And I keep, you know. You're, you're watching a team, and people forget because things move so quickly in the NFL. You know, Green Bay was 13 wins last year, whatever they won, 13-14. And they're out in the playoffs because of special teams. Um, 
boy, would that be a disaster. So the Eagles better fix that as well. No, that's very legit. It seemed like the Packers were starting in plus territory every time. The Eagles scored enough that they were kicking off all the time, and the Packers were ending up in outstanding field territory. And, uh, yes, the Eagles dominated the overall yardage of the game from the line of scrimmage. Well, that's because there are those hidden yards on special teams, and the Packers had a bunch of very good returns. Yeah, Michael Clay, when they break down the tape, uh, is not going to be – there's going to be some rolling of eyes in the Eagles' overall coaching meetings because special teams is a an issue as of right now. They're winning despite the fact that they're getting dominated on special teams in a week-in and week-out basis. But even on special teams, got to give the nod to Jake Elliott. Uh, I'll be honest – I was nervous about the 54-yard yard field goal he made late in the game that basically put it away. He had missed a PAT earlier. Maybe the the Mason Crosby missed PAT. Gave you a little relief, uh, a bout of anxiety with Jake having missed one himself earlier. It seemed like Sirianni knew ahead of time, play call on third down, uh, not uh, necessarily pushing the envelope and – trying to give Jake the shot to make that field goal. Looked like he knew he was going to be able to hammer it home from 54. I, I'm sorry I'm being honest. I did not. I thought it was about a 50-50 proposition. But, damn, he, he rammed it right through the uh, uprights, and that was a huge part of the game. It was basically the first time in the game as much celebratory uh, plays as the Eagles made. You never really got the idea after they went up 13 nothing, and you you blinked they were up 13 nothing. You blinked again. It was 14-13 Packers. I, I never thought the game was put away until Jake Elliott made that field goal. Did you? Um. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the I – didn't, I didn't get a feeling that Green Bay was ever going to win that game if you get that, uh, that kind of – but that was a sense because they were playing so poorly defensively. Um. My my issue with Jake Elliott isn't that he's not going to make I, – I see 60-yard kicks every – it seems like every week in this league now. I thought Justin Tucker was going to make it from 67 or 60, whatever the hell he kicked it from yesterday. I thought he was going to make it because I've seen so many 60-yard kicks this year. I don't know what's going on with these kickers, but their their leg strength is now off the charts. My issue with Jake Elliott, though, is the Eagles are so effective offensively and they're so aggressive offensively, they never kick field goals. So the guy that, that never... Was, that was one of the reasons why I worried about Jake making a 54 yeah, yard but I just meant, out there all that often. I just meant it's not the distance. I know he, he, he'd get it there from 54. Um, it, it's the lack of activity. Yeah, that part, I'm, I'm, I'm a little... That was his 11th field goal attempt. 11th field goal attempt. In 11 games. I, I I mean it, it's it's unbelievable. He's nine out of eleven. Um, it, yeah, I'm, I so from that standpoint, yeah, you don't see him. He doesn't get opportunities, and then you expect him to go out there and make a big kick. So from that, yeah, a little bit, uh, I was concerned. Um, but I, I can't really criticize the Eagles offense. I mean, that he doesn't kick a lot of field goals because they are successful and they do go for it on fourth down and they do, they're very good on fourth down. So um, I'd rather have seven points than three points. You know, Nick calls it a four point play touchdown versus field goal. So um, it's, it's the right decision. It's one of the reasons they're 10 and one. And the aggressiveness, the NFL was way behind that Doug Peterson and, Congrats to Doug because he did it against Baltimore with the aggression, getting a big upset win. He kind of started that in, in the NFL, and it's continuing. And the Eagles are at the forefront of it, and it's worked for him. Yeah. Uh, coming into that 54-yard field goal, Jake Elliott for the season from 40-plus, one for three. He'd only tried three field goals from 40 yards out, and he'd missed two out of the three. So, yeah, I was a little tentative. Tentative no more because he slammed it right through the uprights. So good on him. Uh, yeah, Eagles offense was superior yesterday. Running game mostly, but the passing game, when it needed to be, got the job done as well. All right, we'll begin the nitpicking portion of the show, or at least I will. And Les Bone's going to join us coming up in less than five minutes. The defense. 
last week just stellar after the first drive shutting down the Colts running game Packers ran it pretty efficiently now they're always playing from behind because they give up the 13 points right away so you knew it was going to be more passing than running but they ran the ball pretty damn effectively yesterday the uh, veteran DTs that were brought in off the scrap heap got a week of practice and were less effective yesterday than they were last week is that still a concern that other teams can run the ball against Eagles? It's nice when you're playing from the lead and you're not as afraid against the run. Hopefully they don't fall behind against Tennessee next week because King Henry might run it uh, 40 times. Uh, what did you see out of the Eagles' run defense last night? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, well, I think you're right. I think Green Bay is a good running team with two good running backs for people to don't realize A.J. Dillon, he is a horse, man. Beast. I mean, he is a horse. And Aaron Jones is just a, a really good, uh, well-rounded back. They had more of an issue with – and just pure running game stopping Dillon, which isn't typical. Typically, Jones is more the guy. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought they were fine. That's kind of – that's kind of where they are. They gave up a hunt. What what was it? One oh six. I'm looking at it. Twelve for forty three with Jones. So they had Jones under four yards of carry. Uh, Dylan, as I said, they struggled with. Um, that's part of that's part of how they play defense. I say it all the time. That's that's part of it. But the defense as a whole, I, I I'm not as concerned as as most people seem to be for this reason. We talked about the special teams, the offense as well, with uh, uh, a couple of issues with the 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 back to back sneaks gave them the short field um, when they weren't able to convert, which is rare. Um, the AJ Brown fumble, um, which AJ's not healthy, he's like me, he's been sick, uh, threw up so much he burst a blood vessel in his eye, uh, had another fumble. That's not typical A.J. Brown, but short field, short field. Um, I think they gave up three scoring drives over 50 yards. Uh, so more, and one of them was the, the the Watson play, which is basically a rookie safety taking a bad angle who's not used to playing. Uh, and he's really fast, Christian Watson. But um, – so a lot of things. I mean, a lot of bots and imps, and I know people don't like that. But when you give up all those kickoff returns and you're starting at the 50 or the 40, I mean, that's part of it. And that's why we're talking about special teams. I'm much more worried about special teams than the defense. Um, but as far as the running game, your original question, I say it every week on this show, Jody, that's part of it. They're willing to give up some in the running game to stop the passing game. Here's the problem. You give up the big play to Christian Watson, you're supposed to be limiting explosive plays. Now, if that's Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, it probably doesn't happen. But, again, ifs and buts. Yeah, I'm still a little bit more nervous about the running game because, uh, yes, they did <clears throat> win their previous two games before Sue and um, uh, Linval Joseph got here, but they had been run against – I guess if you're going to take the mindset, hey, you won, who cares how many yards we gave up? That did concern me a little bit. And um, the fact that uh, that was a game that they lost against Washington, they did win one out of two. Yeah, it came, it reared its ugly head again. Now, at some point, we will talk about the return of injured players. Not that you have any definitive, but I'm going to ask you to speculate a little bit on the uh, Davis and uh, Maddox injuries. And also, where does Chauncey Gardner fall into the mix as far as health goes? Uh, we'll talk about it for the next hour and 40 minutes here on Birds 365. And we're going to get a helping hand. Our buddy Les Bowen scheduled to join us coming up in the next couple of minutes. And then in hour number two, Chris Franklin has become a regular day after mostly victories, 10 of them in 11 games. Uh, Eagles uh, spot here with us on Birds 365. So we get uh, Chris Franklin up in hour number two. But next, we got Les Bowen jumping in with John McMullen and Jody McDonald here on Birds 365. Don't wait until after.